Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so this is going to be a very, very interesting one. I'm so excited about what we're going to be creating in this video because it's going to be mind-blowing and extremely beautiful. So what we're going to be creating in this one is I will try to place this lady on this backdrop. Yeah, I know this has been trending for quite a long time now and, you know, as a beginner photographer, it might cost a lot to be able to set that up in your studio, but the good news is, in this video, I'm going to be showing you that if you have just gray, yeah, all you need is just a gray backdrop and you're going to be reproducing this particular kind of backgrounds in your own studio without even having to build it on site. Of course, if you have the funding to build it, it is most beautiful because of the flexibility is going to give you but i'm talking to those that work on kite budget all right so what is the first thing you need to do if you want to place your image on that backdrop it's very simple you need to first of all determine the size you want your image to be and the size you want the backdrop to be and you are going to work within the confines of the provision of photoshop depending on the one you are using so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to crop and i need it to be you know social media size so i'm going to be cropping the image yeah it does give it some headroom very very important because we have some space in the background there are things there are stuff we want to retain so make sure you give your image some headroom then make sure your content aware is turned on so that Photoshop will automatically fill the borders you will be having in the image or the excesses. Yeah, beautiful. So the second step to take, of course, you guessed it right, is to separate your image from your background. Very, very important because you might want to be using your background later or restoring stuff later and you do not want to be going through, the, the, through this process again. So a lot of people would advise you you use, uh, what is it called, layer masking, but I have found this particular procedure very, very effective, especially when it comes to restoring your shadows. So what I would prefer to do is to go to select inverse. All right, so the first thing we need to do, or the second thing we need to do is to just quickly select inverse. So once you select inverse, it gives you the opportunity to now separate your object from your background, and it's a little bit easier to work from that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of my background layer. Right click and go to layer via cut. So this allows me to have my background on a separate layer and have my object on a separate layer. So if you have all the time, you can fill up that space and do what you are doing, but we wouldn't be needing that space. So there's no need filling it up. We'll just be working with it like that. So make sure that your object layer is above all every other layer. Now you have finally finished preparing your objects for the background swapping you will be bringing. Yeah, so the next thing to do is to go to your background and repeat few same processes which is cropping yeah to, so that the size can match and uh also give it a little space so i know you'll be wondering why am i stretching from one side so what we're going to be using is content aware and content aware works better in you know repeated patterns if we go over this area we'll have a lot of things that i'm sure photoshop will not be able to recognize clearly and we're going to have wrong feelings over there but because here I already have repeated patterns is a wall the window is repeated the floor is repeated it's going to give us a more consistent result you know using content aware feel for that area you see so the windows we are just continued the floor was just continued although we have little working uh, movement here but nobody will actually notice so i'm going to you know a lot the layer drag it over place it on our image and here is it almost looking fitted so the next thing to do is of course scaling in yes so you need to scale it in place it where you need it to be beautiful 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 so because we're not going to be creating excuse me my auto select is on all right so so because we're not going to be creating reflection for her on the you know mirror behind her who wouldn't place her in such a way that we need to have a reflection on the mirror so her back can you know serve as a blocking or as a flag for that mirror she can just use her back and cover it 
beautiful so we'll have this here scale in a little bit okay so press enter no all right so press enter now the next thing to do is to blend it in i feel i'm losing my background the lights over there i'm not getting them very good aha this looks better okay so the next thing to do is to blend this object into this background yeah to make it look like she's actually standing there so what do we do the first thing we need to check is the luminosity level is she brighter than the background or is she darker than the background right? to check that we'll play our white up uh, we'll just bring in our black and white adjustment layer so looking at it now you could easily tell that her luminosity level is lower than that of the background so what do we do we darken the background instead of brightening her we bring the background down let me just create curves there so that it will give us flexibility of control so you just bring it down until they are almost matching good the luminosity is matching now so the moment i remove this you notice that she's looking like she actually stood there to take that picture unlike when everywhere was just you know bright and bold and all of that now the next thing to do is to mimic the reflection on the floor so if you look at this floor you notice everything here have their reflection showing on the floor so our object need to also have her reflection showing on the floor so i'm going to make a duplicate of our model press ctrl t right click and go to flip vertically so that she goes upside down then we just drag her all the way down and place her clothes right here where we'll get our reflection created press enter right good okay so let's try flipping horizontally let's see if we'll get the dress touching each other where we want it to be oh beautiful this works better so press enter because it's a reflection of course we are changing the blend mode to anything that we allow us still see it under there but fade it. so we are working with soft light yeah i'm going to desaturate it a little bit because i feel it's too reddish press enter then reduce the opacity good that is all you need to do reduce the opacity so the reflection is there very very obvious and visible but not distracting not distracting all right so moving forward the next thing we need to do is to check if we need to restore our shadows which i think we need to do and of course we didn't change the blend mode of our of our background so i'm going to be changing the blend mode to overlay so working with it in overlay now we are noticing that our background is losing luminosity so we can as well turn this off and be able to check all right so looking at this now i'm going to make it my normal so there's no need changing the blend mode everything is working perfectly so what we need to do is to create artificial shadow for her so initially Changing the blend mode would have given us our shadows back, but because the blend mode is not working, we are going to try to get our shadows back, the original shadows back, without having to change blend mode. So to do that, I'm going to make a duplicate of my background, the original background, drag it all the way in between the object and the background. Keep it here, then change the blend mode to, you know, any other blend mode that allows you to see the shadow, but still show you the background. So let's check. Does this give us the shadow we want? Yes, it does. It does give us the shadow we want. So what we're going to do is that we're going to hold our alternate and create a mask for it and use the brush to just paint all over the floor. Since the floor won't be off, if it's slightly darker, it will give us that dimension we are looking for. So we'll just, you know, paint it over the floor. And once we have it over the floor, we have, you know, a little bit of our original shadows restored. See the way it just brought it down. Everything is looking balanced. We can even decide to darken it down to create more dimension for us. Now I'm beginning to not like this one we painted over here. So we'll get it off. And the last but not the least thing we need to do, or rather not, not necessarily the last thing, is to create one more global color grading. Yeah. Or two more. Let's use our gradient map. Very simple. Uh, change it to noise. Make sure this is kept at 30. Change your blend mode to soft lights. 
not overly soft light. Reduce it a bit, just a bit so you can see the effect and go and start randomizing until you get a color grading that works for you. This is actually beautiful, but let's just keep going. This is beautiful. I'll stick to this, but of course we'll tone it down. Bring it down. Good. Bring it down. Then go to your color lookups. Find a complementing color lookup. I need a lot of contrast now. This won't be bad. I actually like this. So just bring it down a bit. So now the problem or the major issue is that we don't know what we're looking at. Everything is just busy here and there. So all we're going to do is I will try to create depth using lightning. So staying on our background, I'm going to pick up my rectangular market tool and make a selection of everything that is behind her. Then go to my curves adjustment layer and just bring it down like this. Beautiful. Not like that, like this. So just tacking it down so that the attention will go to the daily. But looking at what we're having here, it's looking too distracting. So first of all, feather the masking so that that transition looks very soft. Then secondly, we might need to change the blend mode to luminosity. But I think I actually like the saturated look it had on the normal. Uh, but it becomes a bit more distracting because it's taking away the attention from the lady. So we we'll stick with luminosity. So this is the before. This is the after. So all of a sudden, she's now the attention. Another thing we can do is to just brighten her skin up a little bit. Her skin, not her entire image, just her skin. So we'll just paint it over her. So the idea is to just bring the attention to the lady. And in Lily, we'll have the attention on her. So the last thing we'll do is to go to our camera raw and add some vignetting effects. So I just did Ctrl Shift alternate it to create a, a stamp visible layer. Then go to my camera raw filter all the way down to effect. Then of course, pull in our vignetting. Drag it a little bit to the midpoint, make it a bit smaller. Good. Then we can as well just punch in the saturation a little bit. No. I'm punching the vibrance a little bit and we are good to go. Beautiful. So let me show you. This is the overall before and the after. This is the before. This is the after. Thank you so much for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you subscribe, turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we we'll drop a new video. Until then, see you on the next one.